Greetings and salutations. Hello and Hello. welcome to the second episode of the Crazy Dutchies. I am Jody from Gen X Toys Geek. I'm Chris from Chasing 80s Toys. Let's go Ghostbusters! No, 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 no. We're doing the real Ghostbusters, Jody. Excuse me? Are you sure? Yes. Um, let me check my agenda. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> um, Chris, we're both wrong. Um, we're supposed to do mask. Oh dear. Oh dear. Wait, we can fix that. The crazy Dutchies will be right back after this commercial. Mask, where illusion is the ultimate weapon. Convert switchblade to jet mode. Surprise, Matt Tracker. It's mayhem. Battle station. Protect the decoder, Bruce. I'm going up. Stacks, ready to fire. Mask, switchblade, Thunderhawk, and Rhino. Fire! Each sold separately with action figure. Cover me, Matt. 10-4. Sato's getting away. But you're not, Mayhem. Mask, switchblade, Thunderhawk, and Rhino. Each sold separately. New from Kenner. And we're back, and this time the right branding. What a mistake we made, buddy. Yes, but we fixed that. We're we're professionals. Uh, of course we are. Of course we are. All right, Jody, who do we have in the chat already? So let's have a quick look who we can see. We see Grinder Jim, Karen Bull, MC DJ ACDC, Daniel Carhunen, a world made of cardboard, Walter Vermeer. Wolfie, 762. Hey, Matt. King Eric, the greatest of all. Uh, Herr Schaefer. <laughs> Mr. Connor Fuller. And, yep, that's about it. Full chat so far. Well, that already sounds like a full house. Uh, yes, we're happy to be back, fellas. And uh, we're today going to talk about the toys of Mask. And if you haven't seen episode part one about Mask, the comics, and the cartoon we did that on my channel and there's a link below in the description of this video so uh, if you like to watch that back it's there yep 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 so if you want to learn everything about the cartoon and the comics check out the previous screen on chris's channel and this one is about mask in the toy line yes the toys from the 80s made by kenner and we're going to chat about that and we had a very special guest on last time we did uh, the comics and uh, and the uh, cartoon and well you all loved him so much so we asked if he would come back and uh, here he is mr schaefer hello guys how are you doing <laughs> captain schaefer good good evening for you guys good afternoon to everybody on the west on the east coast of the states and good evening to everybody else and good morning to those on the other side of the world. Um, thanks for having me back on, guys. Yeah, what are we talking about today? I'm not sure. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, we got confused warriors. ourselves a bit. Uh, so apparently, uh, oh, apparently you got it right. Um, you have prepared very well. We're Thank talking you. about the mass toys today. So you've got a nice little collection over there. Thank you very much. This is just a sampling. I. Kept it to a lot of the earlier stuff, but of course, uh, Manta was later. We'll get to all that, I'm sure. But yeah, these are all, uh, everything but Manta and this T-Bob over here are all my childhood uh, survivors. So yeah, wow. a lot of fun nice. to have these out and play with them. Great, great toy line. Love mask. Michael, can you tell us a bit about those uh, display stands you use for Switchblade and for Manta? Because that looks pretty cool like that. Oh, thanks. They're just uh, acrylic stands. Um, they come in, this set came in three different sizes. They actually all nested together. You know, there's, you can tell the height difference here. And then there's a third one that's even lower. They're just clear acrylic stands. Um, got them on eBay. Like, you know, any of the other star stands for figures. And still haven't gotten any stands that fit these figures because their, uh, their foot peg hole is a bit different than, say, Star Wars or G.I. Joe, to the best of my knowledge, and you know you never want to force that stuff. So I haven't haven't ordered any yet because normally, as you can see, most of the time they're displayed in the vehicle. 
That's how I even played with them as a kid. I barely got the characters out because it was all about the vehicles to me. Cool, cool. Yeah. Then, how, how did you play with the mask toys uh, back in the day, uh, Jody? Uh, I played with them a lot, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> um, we'll, uh, we'll talk a bit more about uh, the after effects of playing with them a lot. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I usually uh, just had the figures with the mask in the vehicles and drove around and transformed. And uh, what I love about mask uh, to the toy lines is that the, uh, the like the missiles or the spring loaded missiles uh, or the bus saws, uh, that they actually have at least some power behind them. Um, so they can actually shoot. Uh, couldn't say that of the transformer guns because I always had to upgrade those with uh, springs from uh, like ballpoint pens. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, they they packed a punch, those uh, mask toys back in the day, didn't they? Yeah, um, mask been around for uh, four series of toys, right? You had, uh, they started in 85, and uh, for the people watching, Jody and I are from the Netherlands, and like with the cartoon, we got the toys uh, a few years later. So I think, uh, what time did they show up in the Netherlands? What that Was that late, 86, 87, somewhere like that? Yeah, I think about 87 indeed yeah so what i like to do gentlemen if uh, that's uh, is all right with you is uh, take a look at some of kenner's original catalogs that they used to uh, promote the toys to the different toy dealers back in the day and just go through series one so we start in the year 1985 and i've got a catalog up here um, shall we do nice. this full screen, or can you all see it clearly like that? Uh, yeah, that's a perfect, buddy. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to page one, and this is all the lineup of 85. And over here we have, well, one of my favorite characters and vehicles from the series, and a very good entry-level toy because it was most affordable back in the day, I think. Condor and uh, Brad Turner. Any thoughts, uh, guys? Well, indeed, uh, I think uh, I think the Condor is probably, and as you said, the entry level into uh, into the Matt collection of mass toys, and it's probably one of the first toys that many people in the chat as well had as a first. I think it was one of my first, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it, it Condor was my first mask toy. Um, that was my gateway in because it was affordable. It wasn't, um, you know, some of the other vehicles were more money because they were larger. But Condor and uh, Piranha, I've heard the story told over and over again in the community. It was it was usually one or the other that that was their gateway, if they collected it all into the toy line. So, yeah, Condor, great toy, tons of features, you know, working kickstand, has the dashboard with the sticker. I mean, it's a great toy. And, yeah. I, I talked about it on the cartoon episode, but I would actually, as a kid, um, you saw it on the cartoon once, Brad would uh, turn, he would go to uh, like um, mock, mock speed and he'd bring yeah. down these laser guided uh, skids. This part wouldn't really come up, but they did on the show. So I'd constantly bring that down and have him drive along, you know, at mock speed. So yeah, great toy, tons of, Tons of playtime with the thing and simple transformation, but, you know, really classic and really cool. Yeah, I think we got a comment in the stream from a very good buddy of mine, Walter, from the Netherlands. And he said they used the action they showed in the cartoon. And I think that's a very strong point of this toy line. A lot of the actions and transformations were similar, almost perfect copied from the cartoon. So, yeah, that's something you don't see. Yeah, you don't see that on every toy line. Uh, no. Back now, most day. most of the transformations you saw were almost identical to the way you know the cartoon and the and and the toy. I mean, Manta was really really the only one that was a little different in the back. The fins kind of had a multi folding; they came out and folded up. But you know that's not the case on the toy. We can get to that later, obviously, when we cover it. But yeah, um, the toys were really the cartoon was true to the toy, or the toy was true to the cartoon. However whatever came first or whoever, if they were done at the same time, somebody was really paying attention. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, the, the only challenge I have with Condor is it didn't have any handlebars. 
So it must be hard to drive like this. It's not the Enterprise. <laughs> well, if you, if you think about it, the handlebars would really be very close to where the side view mirrors are indicated. And his mm -hmm. hands kind of fall where they would, so to speak. I, I know what you're saying. There aren't handlebars. But, the, you know, if you look, uh, maybe if I get that out of the way. If you look where his hands fall, if you look at straight on, yeah, mm -hmm. the side view mirrors, and if you look where his hands fall, again, for the year it was compared to a lot of Star Wars toys, the way some of the hands didn't even make any sense with the way they worked <laughs> with the vehicles. I thought that was yeah, no, it wasn't true. a bad compromise. That's true. That's true. Definitely, definitely. And they did a lot of motorbikes in mass. They must have loved motorbikes because one of the other also a favorite of me is Piranha with Sly Rex and that spring-loaded action when they, you can launch that little dinghy, that little uh, mini sub, as it were. That's so fun. Yeah, the, right? the cool thing about the, about the Piranha is it actually had two modes, two attack modes, because you right. actually, uh, on the back, you actually had two switches. One only popped out the guns, and the second actually popped out the entire uh, the mini sub. Right. Yeah, they took the time. I mean, they could have been lazy and just made the wings and the, the cannons only come out when it launched. But mm -hmm. like Jody said, they put in that separate switch there that just you could activate either the, the defense or attack mode or actually launch out the submarine. Yeah, I thought that was a, a great touch. Yeah, well, it's actually it's actually a good thing that uh, the Sly Rex always wears a, almost always wears a helmet when on his bicycle. <laughs> Uh, on his motorbike because the amount of times you see him actually flying off that motorbike yeah, yeah indeed yeah, that does happen and there's a lot of love for these motorbikes in the chat already we have connor telling about mask uh, connor was his first mask toy and he still remembered playing with it underneath the christmas tree and uh, grindhead jim says piran and connor in that order were my first and he loved those two so there's a lot of love for the smaller mask vehicles mm -hmm. they're great they, they packed a ton of play features into every size of the vehicle it didn't matter big or small i thought yeah yeah definitely shall we go and see what's on the next page page what's two, on page two? <laughs> oh also a favorite yeah mask is my favorite toy line so there's going to be a lot of favorites of me in here and let's see if you can see it all right on the screen gator and dusty haze Hooey! Yeah, with that accent and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> love me some Dusty. Oh, I mean, what's more American than a, a bright orange Jeep Wrangler with a half keg in the back? You know, perfect. <laughs> Just driving around. That yeah, you know, uh, also uh, is a depth yard. Sorry. So unfortunately, these are the the two that I actually didn't own as a kid. Hmm. Uh, always wanted at least a Thunderhawk. Uh, um, Gator, it's 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 a nice vehicle. It's a nice toy. Uh, you see you see him a lot in the cartoon, and actually in the cartoons, um, he actually met Tracker dragged uh, the little boat onto his uh, holiday to go surfing about. <laughs> yep, <laughs> they use yeah, it they, for, they for private really care, pleasure. Yeah, they didn't care about being incognito much. You know, they had <laughs> the big mask emblem out and just left half the jeep on the you know. On the shoreline and just driving around in their little boat on holiday just for fun because they're in venice or wherever they were the panama canal i believe one thing about were. this one i wanted to say since I, I mine's in the display right now but since the the rubber or plastic or whatever material they use for the helmet is silver on that for some reason it was a spongier a softer feel than any of the other helmets or masks whatever you want to call them mm. um cr See Chris's part one where he actually came up with a um, an acronym answer for Michael French's question of what does helmet stand for. But anyway, yep. um, the the rubber itself and uh, other people have talked about this. If you don't have the figure just right in the boat when you launch it, his head or his helmet will get caught on that. In the mm -hmm. you can see it there on the photo. It will get caught right before it launches out, and yes. it'll either misfire or keep him caught up and the boat will fly out but anyway if you did it just right it worked fine but just a little nitpick there yeah i did a video on this toy and 
uh, I want to shoot a video where I launch it and I had to do a few takes before I got that right. Yeah, either yeah. he falls out or, or he hits his head on, on the bar of the Jeep right. or, <laughs> but it, it's doable. Yes. Right. And, I mean, and, well, cool and compared to the other toys, it's really the only one with that, I'd say, issue in, tra in transforming or whatever you want to call it. Nothing else I ever found hung up on any of the other toys that I played with regularly. So just wanted well, to what I, what I do have to wonder though, if you actually look at the boats, Mm -hmm. uh the boat versus the the cartoon the the toy actually has this big hole in the front uh the instructions actually say put the mask in there for the helmet yep but it kind of looks to me that they were planning something different because uh, if you look in the cartoon there's supposed to be an engine block there right so was that awesome. supposed to be an engine block in the original design or I thought it was nice that there was a place to, to store the mask because, uh, again, you know, not having a roof on that thing, just the roll cage. It was a nice way that you could safely have him drive around without his helmet on without worry of losing the helmet, you know. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's yeah. the only vehicle that actually has a place for the mask. So is that an afterthought? Because... I think so. I, I would think so. I think they might have intentionally went with a motor block, but that's an extra part. So extra costs for it. Want to keep the costs as down a little bit down for this. Uh, you know, it's it's a medium it's a medium sized vehicle. It's not a big vehicle. Leave the block out of it. Oh, we can put the mask there. But also, I, all the other vehicles have a have a passenger seat or a sidecar, except this. And I would actually jam Brad's helmet right in the in between the dashboard and the uh windscreen and it would hold it there but all the other vehicles you can safely put the masks in the passenger seat mm. and they're not going to fall out not so with gator because there's no side doors there's no the seats are totally different than a lot of the other seats so you know i, I mean obviously if you open up the door on thunderhawk you're going to lose the helmet but you can drive around with the helmet just kind of there in the passenger side i don't know that's <laughs> just me. I have no evidence for that. That's just my logic. You can always put uh, uh, Miles Mayhem's, you know, somewhere loose in the cockpit, and it's not going to get lost. But it's yeah. possible they had a. I mean, they spent all the money though on the Chrome depth charger and the Chrome uh, uh, manifolds on both sides. I mean, to put a little tiny extra thing. I don't know. I don't know. It's possible. <laughs> it is. It is. What I do like to say is that. I think Dusty is lucky that it doesn't rain a lot in the match cartoons because he's got no cover whatsoever from the elements when he's riding yeah. his uh, his Bronco. Yep, <laughs> just like a just like a uh, you know motorcyclist, they they're out in the weather no matter what. Yeah, the Jeep. Well, you, you can definitely say that uh, that he's prepared because uh, ain't that uh, swimming goggles or uh, diving goggles on his head in the, in the toy. <laughs> it definitely it looks like a, a a breathing apparatus type motif, yeah, for sure. But then some, a lot of them do. Uh, obviously, Sly Raxes does. He has he has a very diver's helmet look to his mm -hmm. his helmet. You know that that really looks like a like yeah, an old school does. deep sea diver helmet in a way. Yeah, just not yeah, in bun brass. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go to uh, one of the oh. main characters in terms of uh, vehicle and driver the man who has a mask that can do everything he wants so he doesn't really need the other masks agents uh, <laughs> spectrum's got it got it all this thunderhawk <laughs> thunderhawk a combination of a delorean with um remind me what brand car camaro no camaro. yep camaro che yeah. chevrolet camaro Chevy Camaro, yeah. Yep. IROC. Yeah. Serious. And, yep. And what's cool with all the tires are original car brand tires used for almost all the vehicles. Yep. At least in the first series, the second series, I think in the later series. And and that those were Goodyear tires. So the, the car tire maker Goodyear provided yep. Kenner with the tires for these mask uh, vehicles. How awesome is that? Yep. And Trent. Yeah, I'm wondering how much, uh, how many official licenses they had, because uh, indeed the, the, the tires were marked Goodyear. Uh, we see a lot of, like the Camaro uh, is an exact, almost an exact Camaro. The Bronco is a bit different because I don't think they had a license from Bronco. It's a Jeep. It's not a Bronco. 
That was the jackhammer. Oh, this, Bronco? this, this Bronco. I apologize. I thought you meant Gator. Yes, you're right. The nope. Bronco. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. With I this vehicle, I, I, we hadn't the, gotten to that one yet. I apologize. Sorry. Did any of you guys or anyone in the chat had that had Thunderhawk back in the days had a problem that when you first take them out of the box, you know, you put stickers on, you start playing with them, the doors flip right open, but during the times when by the dogs the doors didn't were flipping open it's all not, the way anymore you know the, the spring was the, oh yeah the spring would wear out i i remember as a kid taking the doors off and just adjusting the spring just bending it back out a little bit mm. and they popped right back up so i i did i even was aware of it and would repair it as a kid yes indeed yeah. indeed that's that's the point i wanted to make because that, yeah. as, as a small kid i found out oh yeah if i pull that yep. spring a bit mm -hmm. it works brilliantly again yeah, yeah so, some, so some of them are known to actually have the springs mm -hmm. wear out and uh we'll actually get to uh repairing the toys in the a bit later in this stream yeah Oh, I wonder yeah. what you have to say about that, uh, Jody, because I never had to repair my choice, but we can we get to that point later. <laughs> but I always wished I had a Thunderhawk. I never had a Thunderhawk. Uh, mm -hmm. A friend of my brother had him, and he was one of those kids that didn't appreciate his toys because mm -hmm. uh, he actually let the Thunderhawk fly. Oh, geez. By throwing it. And oh. Oh, I would strangle him. That was really, really sad. One thing as a kid that bothered me was um the 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 rear spoiler didn't quite stay down far enough mm -hmm. which meant the rear this is the way it should be but the mm -hmm. bumper and they're all like this the bumper kind of creeps up a bit and you just get a sneak peek at the sorry didn't work there at the uh rear which says mask it, it reveals yep. his his um I think, every, I think every Thunderhawk I've seen has an issue. Uh, I right. haven't seen a single Thunderhawk where the, the bumper actually fits down completely. Downwards. Right, that, that, that's what I was saying. Um, but what I also didn't like was on the show, the, the, uh, the real rear exhaust engines would actually come out. But mm -hmm. as long as the missiles are in place, the engines actually are, because of the way the mechanism works, the engines are actually in farther so if you actually mm -hmm. drop the missiles now the engines are out farther i don't know if that yep. is showing on camera but as a kid i again a little bit of ocd and all i that would bother me so i would actually drive around without the missiles in or fly around without the missiles in so the engines were more readily available yeah, uh, yeah. For view. i don't know did, did you guys Just lose the missiles sorry did you guys ever lose the missiles? I, I I managed to hold on to mine as a kid, but they're so small, so I can imagine those are easily lost. Yeah, I I would. I mean, I launched them hundreds of times in play in the grass, all over the place, outside, inside, and I always would re recover my payload. So luckily, in fact, I think the only missile I lost was for Firefly and Slingshot, which I don't have on the table, mm -hmm. but I've reacquired the Slingshot bomb. But yeah, all the other stuff, you know, I've somehow managed to keep switch blades. I think, uh, I think Scuba actually asked a really good question. I think it's oh. the most reproduced par mask parts you can actually find on eBay. The bombs uh, for Thunderhawk. Yeah, often when you go to uh, eBay and you search just for mask, uh, the the bombs for Thunderhawk pop up a lot as repros. Yeah. Mm. And because the plastic that they made of them from it's not perfectly uh the same color it's kind of modeled so the mm -hmm. reproductions don't look bad at all they look almost identical it, you know the quality of the originals while the mold was pretty sharp the, the actual silver plastic or whatever they used isn't always identical in um or completely homogenous i should say it's kind of modeled sometimes in the color mm -hmm. i've it seen it on some toys Right. I'm going Sorry. to go to the next vehicle, and what would that be? Would it be the big one or? Oh, well, it's definitely it's definitely a really cool vehicle again. Uh, Cliff Dagger and th that Bronco. Look at that. Love that toy. Oh Great yes. Toy. 
Yeah, but it was also so action-packed because yeah, you you had the the, the rear uh, gunner turret that popped up. Uh, there was this little gray gun uh, hiding in the chassis, um, which you just have to love because if you have accessories, yeah, please give us a storage uh, part of them. Uh, unlike Transformers, where yeah, you could put like a prime fist, you could put them inside the cab, mm -hmm. but you had nowhere to put the his rifle except if you put it in the trailer but yeah that, that, that was brilliant but also yeah as soon as you pop up the hood um then the 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 front laser guns they actually start going up and down when you're when you're driving around with uh, the jackhammer yep it's a great feature absolutely great, yeah and it looks beautiful look at yeah. it you do have to wonder though, how uh because Cliff Dagger wasn't the brightest guy, but he can manage from the turret to actually both man the turret and drive the jackhammer simultaneously. He's got yep. some skills, Dan. Yeah, yeah. He's I always thought that was cool skills. in the animation of the show. You would actually sometimes see him disappear from the yeah. driver's seat back and, you know, come up in the turret seat. Always thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> yep. But no yeah. back seat to that Bronco. It, you know, it's basically a Bronco pickup truck with a turret on top. Yeah. It is, it is. It is a very cool one. and Really cool. Of course, Cliff Dagger works for his boss, and his boss is the always happy and friendly. No, that's not right. Always the grumpy Miles Mayhem and his <laughs> awesome vehicle switchblade that turns from a helicopter into a fighter jet plane. That vehicle was ace. Yeah. Love that. I think that would have been, I got that right after Thunderhawk, and Thunderhawk would have been the third vehicle I think I got. So that would have been the fourth, and then followed by Jackhammer. So yeah, great vehicle. Um, I know a lot of people give it crap because it's two flying vehicles, but there is mm -hmm. practicality to vertical takeoff for a helicopter, and then the speed and maneuverability of a jet. So yeah, I thought it was cool. It never bothered me as a kid because I understood the physics of a helicopter not being able to go. I knew Airwolf was total bunk, you know, the whole road has <laughs> been going mock speed doesn't work so well. So, yeah, but, but funny, funny enough that in the cartoon, he actually converts a lot back into the helicopter when he's fleeing away or when he's True. retreating. Good point. To, to save true. fuel, to save fuel, he was, uh, you know, he, he was uh, minded of the environment and, uh, yeah, yeah. He would also, if he really needed to book it out of there, he'd flip to jet mode and just, you know, hit <laughs> the afterburners as well. It's a great vehicle. And that missile that you can launch. Oh, yeah. Love the, yep. love the big orange, yeah, day glow orange bomb. Love that. Yeah. Touches it's a, a great chrome. Yeah. Yeah, good, yeah. We're good. Good, we're good figure. Sorry. Indeed, indeed. All right, let's see. Ah, yeah, there it is. That's the one I was waiting for. Rhino. The vehicle and the place at all in one. Yeah, and two figures you got with yes. that one. Yes, I still yep. wish it would have come with uh, um, Alex, Alex Hector. Yeah, Alex Hector should have really been with the Rhino, uh, yeah. not the, the Matt with Ultra Flash. Uh, I think Matt with Ultra Flash should have been a carded figure only not that i ever bought or saw them but he how often was he in that less than five times maybe in all 65 episodes in that yeah it wasn't something, much. Like that. something like that yeah it was it was almost always uh bruce with alex yeah and oh, unfortunately yeah. alex you, you you only got with uh with the boulder hill right mm -hmm. Yeah, now it made sense for Buddy Hawk to come with Boulder Hill to me. That made total logical sense. But no, Buddy Hawk belongs to the firecracker, buddy. No. He sometimes is in it, but he was his post was at Boulder Hill. We got a little debate here going on. Just saying, that's his job. He's he's always there. He's always working on a car and somebody's, you know, cut caught, you know, stuck in the middle of nowhere, and Buddy gets a call on his watch, he's got to leave and hands him a wrench. It's like Hey man, yeah, I gotta get yeah, out of yeah. here. I have a grandchild's birth. They were always elderly too, it seemed, you know? Really keeping mm -hmm. on the old people. Anyway. 
Just yeah, I, I will give the deciding vote. I think Buddy Hawks indeed should be tampering with his car in Boulder Hill. So, uh, Michael, you and I win that one. Sorry, Jody. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, 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 Buddy yeah. up on the cannon. Yeah. So, uh, people in the chat, give us a vote. Should Buddy Hawk belong with Firecracker? Press in number one. <laughs> or should the hawk belong with the boulder hill press number two we'll get at the results in a few minutes so oh, yes. number one it it belongs with firecracker. Those, number it two it belongs with boulder hill uh, those phone uh, tones you know the touch tone dialing press one <laughs> yes yes um next page is uh, the biggest play set of uh, of the masks here if you want to go to that or do we want to go to that play yep. set later on Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, all right. Here it is. I didn't know. Okay. A mountain of a playset. You can fire a boulder. You can put vehicles in there. Boulder Hill. This was and still is, I think. Even over Castle Grayskull, and I love Moto a lot. This is my favorite playset of the 80s. Wow. This is the only yeah. playset of the 80s I had, actually. The only one. I had two places. I had the TMT, TMNT uh, sewer place at uh, the Boulder Hill. But yeah, definitely Boulder Hill was definitely my favorite. Uh, we played with it all the time, me and my brother. Uh, it's too bad the Rhino can't drive out of the garage. Right. But uh, for the rest, all the other Vega vehicles can. And yep. it's so action packed. Uh, and even on the inside, uh, you see a lot of molded details in the plastic, rather than stupid stickers like uh, some opening playset we some people love. Grayscale, not Grayscale, but Snake Mountain. Oh, yeah. And rather than a flimsy little net, it actually has a proper functioning cage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that that doubles as a computer, as a computer. Uh, you know, center, which is kind of console. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Has it yeah. has a, you, the ubiquitous trap door that every good hideout needs. So that's kind of cool too. Yeah. You're right. Scuba Pete. Skeletor is going to be jealous of this man. <laughs> <laughs> you boob. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's beautiful. So yeah. Coming, but the coming back to the votes, apparently, Number one, number one, number one, number one, number one, number number one. I don't see any number two, so you're outdranked, buddies. You're outdranked. It goes okay, with the firecracker. So okay. who should have who should have come then with Boulder Hill? If Buddy Hawks shouldn't come with Boulder Hill, and Alex Sector shouldn't come with Boulder Hill, who then should have? I know, I know. Oh, oh man, if Ultra Flash can uh, can man the Boulder Hill in the meantime, Scott and T Bob put them with Boulder Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, what's on the next page? Yes, on the next page we find. Well, that was it. To I be agree. honest, that, that was that was the the. I love the a first plan. year, 1985 of vehicles. You know, we get a big play set and uh, you know the basic vehicles for the for the for the baddies and for the good guys. Uh, no Vanessa Walker and Manta in series one. Yeah, that was really, really missing for me. Um, I think the Manta, so first of all, the Manta, but also the Shark should have definitely be in Series 1. So that's yes. missing. Yeah, and indeed the Manta with Vanessa Warfields. Uh, still one of my favorite mass vehicles of all time, the Manta. Yeah. Just a gorgeous car. Just a gorgeous car. Yeah. Okay. Well... We're going to go to the year 1986 then, and in that year, they re-released a lot of vehicles from the first year, but we also see a few new faces there. Again, a motorcycle mm -hmm. in the form of this uh, red Evil Knievel. Yeah, Floyd Malloy and Vampire. And pretty mad, pretty motorcycle. mad. <laughs> I mean, to have a jet motorcycle, that's pretty damn cool. Yeah, you can do some stunts with it and uh, jump some canyons. This is yeah, proper proper stunt driving material there. Yep. Well, but Battlestar Galactica did it first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. But yeah, this this is one I I had. It wasn't my favorite. Um, it was pretty action packed though. Uh, mm. My dislike was how his legs fit. You know, underneath those handlebar things. Yeah. And how. 
the way the the seat would disappear like I, sometimes the figure would jam up because the the toy actually uh popped it slid this way it, it slid on a hinge back and forth and it would get longer or shorter and the way the legs actually you can see it there on the picture the legs under those little that little black tab that's coming out from the base of the gun uh, yeah. mm -hmm. on the, on his left side his legs fit straight out there and would hold under there to keep him on the vehicle anyway it just yeah. it wasn't a great design but it was still a cool toy and i had it i still have it and it you know played with and it affordable a and affordable a lot of the mass yes. vehicles are afford affordable you know you got a lot of smaller vehicles than some medium vehicles and some a little bit bigger than that like thunderhawk and your jackhammer and then you got your rhino and the border hill set and switchblade so there's something for everybody's budget yeah. back in the day here i suppose without a doubt and and like we said there's also the figures you know if you couldn't afford a vehicle you could you know for the kid that could only afford the figure you still could get that too oh you mean the two packs yeah you yeah. know i'm just saying like they 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 hit many different price points you know from the big play set to rhino like like chris just said they they sure did and Jody's favorite. Yeah, nope. you, you. What I seem to remember is that you said, "What did you say before the chat started?" You liked this toy a lot, Jody. Nope. Or nope, my least favorite toy, and we'll talk all about it in a few minutes. Why? My least favorite toy of them all. Yeah, and the yeah. worst designed one as well. Wow, the the worst designed one. That's the a worst one. designed. Yep. Wow. Major design flaw on that one. <laughs> it's probably yeah. also the. Now it's the second one that broke on me. What's the first one that broke on me? Uh, it's probably Piranha. Yeah, so, yeah. I had a few breakages. Hmm. Well, we'll come. We'll come back to breakages. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Because I, I never had this as a kid, but from all the mass vehicles I had, nothing ever broke. And this, this one, I definitely would have loved to to got this too because it's. I, I always was in doubt. Did it did it tr transform into a, a, a some sort of racing buggy or more a like a buggy, Formula yeah. One uh, car? No, it was a dune buggy. Dune buggy, yeah. Yeah, they 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 advertise it as a dune buggy for sure. But there was, I agree, there was a bit of a Formula One feel to it for sure. It had yeah. a, a similar silhouette to the eras, at least Formula cars. Maybe not one, but it could have been Formula Ford or Formula Three or whatever else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tim Hayes. Hi, Tim. He, uh, hey, Tim. he, he agrees with you uh, on that one a bit, uh, Jody. And uh, I have mine. No, I, I never had the issues that Jody had with his, but you know, both both are just uh, oh, what's the word for uh, evidence? Um, anecdotal evidence. Okay. yeah well that's firefly with julio lopez the pilot and let's see what else came out because we got another pretty cool vehicle i got this in the year 1987 during christmas and that corvette that transformation yeah. calhoun burns is a driver the vehicles his uh, code name is called raven and it turns from a corvette into an aqua plane how cool is that and on the show, Didn't we saw it. Fly? Yeah. Well, on the show, yeah, we saw it do three things. It went underwater. It went, like he said, an aqua plane on the water or just above it. And then sometimes we just saw it flying in the air with like a regular plane. So it could do three things. Uh, that's, I never put it underwater, but I, that's the way I played with it in my mind as a kid. And then that, that it shot, you know, projectiles out. Two different, I think it came with two blades, right? I yeah, know, I know. I only have two for mine, but yeah, used to shoot those all the time. Oh like, yeah, like those old disc guns. It's the same mechanism that those old disc guns used with the, the. There's like a coupling disc and a little spring mechanism in there, and it just fires them out. Yeah, and it still works on mine, till this day. Yeah, same. Great quality. Yes, uh, it shot them actually pretty far as well. Yes, yes it did. It packs some power on the, on those blades. I mean, Rhino, let's see if I can catch this. I'm always worried. Yeah, I mean, that still launches pretty high. Are you, are you going to, come on, let's get, uh, are you going to shoot Rhino? Right I now? just did. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's get you on the screen uh, on the big screen. Uh, oh, we want yeah. to see that. Yeah, it flies right out. Nice. Look at that. Yeah. Thirty. Well, actually, this year, yeah, thirty-five years. Nineteen eighty. No, thirty-six years. Nineteen eighty-six. Two thousand twenty-one. Amazing. Yep. Yes. Oh, there were, were those some of the figures. Oh, there yeah. were, okay. these yeah. were the figures that came in the the double packs. Let's see if I can get nice. those a bit bigger. You know, you get uh, mm -hmm. Matt and Miles together. You got Alex Sector and Buddy Hawk. You got Hondo that came with version two Matt Tracker and Bruce and Brad came together. And of course, the comic duo of Venom, Sly Rex, and Cliff Dagger. Those those were the choices we got uh, already in series. I don't know if we got those in series one or in series two, those two pack figures, but. The well, funny thing is that this picture actually shows them with the short masks rather than the long mask. And I'm pretty sure that they came with long masks right now. They did over here. They did over here. We're going to oh. chat a bit about those masks later on when we're through these catalogs. And what Let's we also. So yeah, it's the adventure packs. Um, uh, we had a total of eight apparently, uh, of which four European exclusives, um, which I found actually surprising that for once us Europeans actually got something that the Americans didn't. <laughs> because the Arctic Assault, the Glider Strike, the Sea Attack and the Racing Arena were purely European exclusives. Uh, did any, did you guys own any of these? I actually had the Coastal Patrol or the Coast Patrol and Venom's Revenge. Oh, wow. I still have the one of the missiles or two of the missiles there somewhere in the house. Wow. <laughs> I know my buddy Walter was, was in the chat, and uh, Walter and I know each other since we were four years old and grew up with all these awesome toy lines. Um, he had the Coast Patrol, if I'm not mistaken, and I had the Sea Attack at some point. I, I didn't, not only did I not have these, I don't even have a recollection of them being on the shelves. If they were, I somehow had tunnel vision and only was interested to get, because I said at the beginning, for me, Mask was all about the vehicles, much more than the figures. So if these were there, I looked right past them and was only into the vehicles. So yeah, not, never, never had them. Don't have yeah. any in my collection now either. I don't blame you for that because they were... <laughs> Awesome vehicles like look at Firecracker uh, with Hondo McLean and you get a motorbike, you get this off-roading vehicle that yeah. can shoot tires, that got tons, that got the hypno headlights. What more do you need? And it also, to the best of my knowledge, this is the only one. It doesn't have brand names on the tires. I'm going to see if I can read this in this lighting. But it actually has the tire size. It says all-terrain radials. They uh, he runs a CN three thirty five seventy five R fifteen in the rear, and the same size on the front. But no name. But you know, I, I never saw any of the other tires with the actual sizes printed on the on the actual rubber. And like you said, Chris, you have this separate a whole separate vehicle on the back mm -hmm. with the. Uh, the motorcycle and it's reusing the wheels that were on piranha and on uh, condor so they were yeah. using parts but a great sport bike design yeah really cool yeah arguably the best looking motorbike in the toy line in terms of how realistic and how perfect it looked in details that motorbike it, it cannot transform it's it's only a, a backup vehicle but yeah it looks pretty good yeah I, I wonder if this is also the the actually the last one that came with the the short helmet versions. Well, at least we got some more vehicles here. The bad guys got some new firepower too, and in terms of uh, Bruno Shepard and Stinger, and I never had this as a kid. Always was fascinated by it. It transformed into some sort of rolling tank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I have this one. I was always disappointed those those side pipes that turn into those flaming guns. Yeah. They always would come off. That connection wasn't very good. It was just like a friction half C. Um, it, it was fine. It was definitely, you could tell, the, the plastic just felt a little different and the engineering wasn't quite like it was in 
the first series for my taste. I do have it. I played with it a bunch, but yeah, not not a huge fan. And it didn't really have the the right GTO feeling for some reason. It just didn't mm -hmm. feel like the GTO. I mean, I know that's what it's supposed to be, but anyway. Yeah, what are your thoughts on this one, uh, Jody? Um, I'm trying to recollect if I had them. I, I know I've played with it. Um, I don't know if I actually had it. Um, I actually loved it, especially in vehicle mode. Uh, it was actually a really, really cool vehicle mode, especially with the big turbo engine on the hood. Mm -hmm. uh, reminded me a bit of uh, Mad Max. <laughs> yeah, the boot can open. As, cool yeah, as the boot can open, so there's a lot of play feature. But indeed, the, the, the weak point are the, the smokestacks that, that raise up uh, to fire. The really, really weak point in this one. Mm. It's not the exact same design, but it's a similar gimmick that is on Ra uh, Raven for the wheels, the center yep. parts to come up and be the lasers. But, uh, I mean, it was cool because you had, you literally had, you know, eight guns there plus the fire plus the, the main, that big, whatever that mortar gun thing is yeah. on the windscreen. So, yeah, it had, it was packed to the gills with firepower for sure. It had a lot of firepower and to counter that firepower, Mm. Mass decided to to uh, bring in another vehicle. Well, they had to. If you follow the cartoon, Firecracker gets a bit messed up, and he, Hondo gets a new vehicle. And here it is, Hurricane. But that and that that was in the opening of every single episode, though. That was in the you know the cartoon opening, so we saw it all the time. That '57 Chevy with the flames, and yeah, I, mine's in the uh, display case. But beautiful vehicle. I think Michael French on Retro Blasting has a. A repair video of, of that one. I know we're going to talk about repairs later, but yep. for some reason that one, mm. I remember I have Vision's uh, memory of seeing that in on his video. But yeah, like it was cool that they paired them both together because they both felt like the tank vehicles for both sides, much more than any other vehicles. They felt like rolling tanks. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Second version of Hondo and second version of Blaster. Yeah. And funny. He never on the cartoon wore that outfit. He wore that helmet, but he wore yep. his Mark I outfit that he had with Firecracker. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously they were trying to make something more dynamic for the kids and give him a whole new figure, but that always, I often would put that helmet on the other body just so it was more screen accurate when I was playing. Now that's an idea. I never did that. Makes sense. Make totally sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yes. Yeah, my, my Michael French, as you said, he has a whole video uh, talking about uh, the two hondos and the firecracker versus the uh, the hurricane and uh, the hurricane showing on, uh, up in the cartoon uh, intros, um, but only showing up later. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a bit of, of a weird story. And it, its name changed. It was yep. it was introduced yes. as a different name. You know. Yeah. Then we have Ace and. Ooh slingshot a van and pretty cool 80s uh, looking van i think with that spoiler on top and a small airplane shoot out of it you can sit in there i yeah. never had this one but uh, i you, can you actually put ace into his vehicle without actually transforming him first can you put it in the vehicle without transforming um <laughs> No, he cannot. I mean, he can sit in the cockpit of the plane when the vehicle's not transformed, but yeah. he can't sit in the front position and he can't. I don't think he can even sit in the gunner's position back there. If you look uh, on the base in the back, it, that's actually a seat, too. So there's the front seat mm -hmm. that he's at, but then there's a back seat, too. And that turret spins as you roll the car, uh, the vehicle along. The turret mm -hmm. spins around. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, to me, as a kid, a minivan was lame. Uh, <laughs> but I thought the vehicle was cool because you know had a flying part. That that jet glider thing was really really cool. So yeah, I I have one in my collection. Uh, I think mm -hmm. the uh, license plate is a vanity plate that says cruising. <laughs> Just cruising. <laughs> But it's kind of a like a mobile base too. If you look there, you know, there's yep. screens on the the walls and yeah. That's what I always liked. When when a vehicle can transform in some sort of base where you got your controls, where where 
you know you can watch your monitors uh, manage the weapon systems yep yes yes thanks for uh, dropping on the chat for for a while uh, goji hey thanks Gojitron. take care <laughs> yes all right i never had ace Riker too so i don't have really that much to say about him either but there was another big vehicle and here he is and this is one that's still on my wish list one of my holy grails of mask that one day i will find and hopefully in the world volcano with jacques lefleur sacre bleu he is a frenchman he's a frenchman <laughs> i do not know matt what shall we do yeah a volcano van um never i don't have it never saw it on the shelves what was this series two this was right yeah. at the end yeah. right series two yeah, yeah. I, series two I don't because it came. It was in hardly any episodes, if memory serves. Well, no, quite a lot when when the episodes, uh, a lot of the later episodes. Okay. Yeah, he was in Venice. He was. Uh, with those, I yeah, thought it was more episodes. like like just a handful, you know, like five or six. It wasn't. It wasn't like you know, the ubiquitous other vehicles that we saw constantly. No, um, that's. I'm right. not saying it wasn't often, but you know. Anyway, well, that's, um, is that's this cool. mo this one's motorized, right? Um, there is a motor in there, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've never seen one in the wild. They are rare. That's why, I, that's why I was surprised it was Series Two because they just seem more rare than the other Series Two vehicles to me. It's cool. Look at those stars. Just look at that. <laughs> those are big. And two figures you get. Eh? Another version of Matt Tracker, right? And and Jacques Lefleur, which uh, yeah, pretty cool. So did the Volcano actually come with accessories? Two figures. And uh, no shooting projectiles, if, the, if that's what you meant. Okay. No, no it's just, just, just a vehicle and two figures, uh, Scuba. So nope, no, no easily lost accessories. <laughs> Unless you count the mask or the helmets as an easily lost accessory. If you look for him online, uh, the top gun with the turret, that's uh, missing. So that can come off, of course. So there are parts on here that can come off. And you usually see incomplete ones. Or if there is a complete one, the prices are sky high for this one. So that's why I'm yeah. still waiting to, you know, get one of these to just wait till the right price and right deal comes along. But and definitely like going to own him one day. Looks like that moonroof hatch also opens, which means it might be able to can that. Can you take that off? Could that be missing too? Yeah, Could I be. definitely definitely uh, saw that the roof was missing and the gun that pops out, that that was missing. And uh... Yeah. Yeah, I, I've never, like you said, every time I've seen one complete, which is very rare, they go for large sums of money for sure, or at least on eBay and the other places I've checked. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah, here's another one. This is, again, one I never had as a kid. This. I think it's the biggest vehicle on the, the side of Venom. It's uh, yeah. Well, you you tell what it's called and uh, tell something about it, uh, Michael. You got him. Oh, I do. Yeah, he's it. Uh, oh gosh, the name just uh, outlaw. 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 Sorry, couldn't think of the name. Uh, yes, it was cool because you wanted a base for the bad guys. You have a base for the good guys, and even though it's a vehicle, it really is a mobile base. I mean, things pop out. Uh, there's computers, there's whatever that charging unit with the, with the orange hose was, um, different screens, different levels there, uh, up top, uh, if you go down, yeah, just scroll, scroll it down so I can see, oh, it doesn't have the picture. I'm sorry, but the back part behind the cannon there, it's two stories high. So, and there's, there's levels and pegs to put figures in a whole bunch of control room, com uh, computer monitors up there as well. And again, came with two figures, uh, another Miles Mayhem, the second, I guess, right? This is the, yeah, we got one with the mini vehicle package, one oh, with the right. beige yeah. outfit, and this is the third, uh, the third version of him, and Nash Gori. <laughs> and because the missile, uh, the tip is a red rubber, but the body of the missile is made of gold plastic, and it does suffer from gold plastic syndrome. Um, in fact, I launched mine and didn't catch it and it cracked a bit one of the two i, I i'm lucky to have both of the missiles still but be very careful don't uh i mean launching them themselves doesn't break them but if you don't catch them if they hit anything it's it's highly likely they're going to crack in mm -hmm. some way 
Yeah, but it also came with like tons of accessories that are easily lost. Um, yeah, it has that. It has that. Yeah, red. Yeah, there's the missile. It has the black thing. There's a computer. It has a red hose, and there's two radar dishes. Yep, and it actually comes with two missiles. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It does have some parts to to go missing. And once yep. those radar dishes are on top of that folded up, uh, you know, tanker, it's quite high. It won't fit in my display with those those on, actually. Yep. Cool vehicle, yeah, though. It, I said it before. It still always reminded me vaguely of um, Goliath from Knight Rider because of the black oh, yes, yes. flat front. You know, it's not an aerodyne like, like Rhino is, so cab over. So before we go to Series 3, let's actually talk a bit about the short and long versions of the helmets. Yes. Uh, mm. Where at first, the first wave of the vehicles actually came with uh, more cartoon-accurate helmets, and especially like Spectrum and the Blaster. Uh, although the blast of the blaster is really, really tiny. And then after the series, uh, after series two, wave two, uh, they actually changed all the helmets to become longer, fit better on the figures. So they won't, uh, won't get lost easily. And what you see is that all the helmets actually have holes in uh, on the top. So I'm assuming that's kind of like, uh, or we see with other figure lines where they actually took the concept of the the big pen caps with a hole on the top to uh, stop people from choking. Yep. So was this around the same era when the rocket firing Boba Fett? No, rocket firing Boba Fett was a lot earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah, and that that wasn't even the cause. It was the uh, Battlestar Galactica vehicle that actually caused it, which was that was in the seventies. So this was mm -hmm. half a decade later. That was late yeah. 70s, I want to say 78, 79 for Battlestar yeah. when that toy happened. But yeah, because yeah, it's, it's, they weren't accurate, I really did not like the the, the version 2. Because again, I was always make, trying to make stuff look like the cartoon. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they, they bothered me. Especially the stuff on the chest. The hole didn't yep. bother me. The first hole on top, but then the chest with the hole, like none of that made sense. Because the helmets fit... Mm -hmm. I mean, other than other than uh, uh, blaster, the helmets really stayed on. I mean, I could not get the helmets to come off the figures, so I never saw it as an issue. I thought it was more of the choking issue, like you said, like the big pen caps. Mm -hmm. That was yeah, and the, the, especially the blaster mask. It, it's so hard to find, and if it's online, it's it's like super expensive. Uh, just this little piece of plastic goes for what, like eighty USD uh, Ooh. minimum. Oh, at least, yeah, yeah. At the the Viper mask change was a bit weird, though. It's I wonder why they got rid of the black part in the in the neck piece mm -hmm. for the hole for the air. That's why they had to do. They had to have a complete hole for the air to get through. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing, you know, because if say it got stuck in a different position than top to bottom, you needed something on, you know, a, the other axes to have a hole. I'm guessing. I'm sounds sure feasible, sounds cool. feasible. Sounds very feasible. Mm -hmm. I'm not a safety expert in any way. Do not take safety lessons from me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Let's go to the year 1987 when the first, the, the first, the third series of vehicles was released, also known as the racing series. Mm. And we got a different storyline in the cartoon and different vehicles altogether. Let's start with uh, Iguana with uh, Lester Sludge. Love that name. <laughs> yeah. You just know he's a bad guy with a last <laughs> name of Sludge. <laughs> yeah, but all he did is throw mud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, actually that's... have that vehicle. I, I Until now, I didn't even know it was Series 3, are we on? Yeah, Series 3. Yeah, yeah. Series 3. Yeah. Might have, might have been, other than this, because I just bought this about a year ago, might have been the last the last mask vehicle I bought as a kid. Mm. But these only came out, you're saying these only came out in 1987? These were 1987 in the, in the States. Wow. And let's say it was 88 in the Netherlands somewhere that we, we got them, because my buddy Walter, again, had this. I didn't have this one. And it's one of those entry level vehicles again in the same price range as Gondor and, uh, and Vampire. But 
yeah it has a nifty transformation so it, it's a cool little you just little you had thingy. a video about picking one up somewhat recently no Chris? yeah yeah i bought mine uh, uh a few weeks ago uh yeah fun vehicle cool. greatly yeah. priced if you want to start collecting for everybody in the chat who doesn't collect mask uh, yet and to our friend jeff who is uh, re-watching this i believe if uh -huh. you want to get started with mask the the, the motorbikes yeah. or iguana are the vehicles to start with if you don't want to throw in a big budget from the start you know that and they're so much fun to collect yeah. it, it's are, similar are. to uh the um the red what was I can, I can never remember the name of the red uh motorcycle vampire so, vampire sorry vampire. it's similar in the gimmick that uh the mechanism makes it shorter or longer so he goes from like a seated a seated four-wheeler position to a standing up shorter wheelbase yeah the the, the, sh the picture shows it there yeah um, so yeah sim just i was commenting that the mechanism is similar or the gimmick is similar to the the vampire design it is it is watch out with the mask if you buy this one this is a mask that can tear easily oh, i don't know wow. if, if, if it's the material uh, if it's slightly different it, it's a thinner material if you compare his mask with some of the masks from series two and uh, series one those masks are all thicker thicker material than this one so okay yeah it's a, it's a very very soft rubber this one hmm. good to know and now you know <laughs> yeah. and next to it is another vehicle that i never had i never saw this in the toy stores over here in the netherlands but it's it's not in that many episodes too i believe there, there were only 11 race series episodes anyway and i think it was in two two of them or meteor with ace Riker and a butt firing missile <laughs> rear torpedo rear, yep. photon, <laughs> rear photon torpedo almost right yeah I, I no recollection of this i didn't watch the racing series as a kid um yeah wasn't the quality somewhat dropping on on them by by this time it just didn't feel quite like when i see these in the wild now the plastic just doesn't feel quite like some of the earlier series it could just be a false you know feel but maybe just, someone in the in the chat knows you know if you're in the yeah, chat had some of, had some of the later vehicles let us know if, if quality wise there was a drop there yeah, I, I never had any issues with the i i had a few series three but i never had issues with series three vehicles mm. cool only series cool. one and two that broke on me <laughs> <laughs> all right now this we got to talk about you know we've been waiting since 1985 for yeah. kenner to give us manta with with vanessa warfield and finally in a racing series they gave us manta and it, it's based on one of our favorite cars isn't that right michael the nissan Absolutely. 300 zx ZX. beautiful and purple yep. <laughs> oh yeah but i mean this this chick was bad ass i mean she she's the only one that drove around on racing slicks there is no tread on these tires and i think that's on purpose all yeah. the other tires have some form of tread she's driving around on street roads in racing slicks doesn't mm -hmm. care got to get there fast i mean it's a beautiful vehicle the transformation is super cool you know very very close to the, the cartoon the transformation um let's see if i can do this on uh -huh. camera i use i used to love putting a cliff dagger in the passenger seat <laughs> and like passenger dropping seat. him yeah. off there's a after i transform it i'll show so oops got stuck up got hung up there so yeah the one one button is supposed to uh it's supposed to transform everything in one move let's see there we go yep. so it releases yeah, the the wings and the front and then you just rotate the tires underneath on the front and then like you guys said putting cliff dag or anybody there's an ejection seat ubiquitous ejection seat so mm -hmm. yeah just like that but it's kind of cool because there's actually again just like thunderhawk there's a seat belt to hold the passenger in plus there are lasers so it's almost an offensive ejection seat that you can actually then i think it even mentions it in the uh 
in the instructions, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, well, well, what, I, what I noticed about the, the Manta is that the transformation of the Manta is actually very, very quite simpler, similar to the transformation of the shark. Mm -hmm. So where is our shark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still didn't get it back it's, in 87. We do you think it's... Do you think it's the Porsche license? Do you think because it's a likeness of a Porsche and the cost of that that they would mm. have to pay was too high? Maybe I don't know. I'm not uh, sure. it could I'm be it's, it's also we're still in the era where they think that girls in boys' toys don't oh. match. But then yeah. we got Vanessa, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 weird why yeah, shark is missing. Maybe too complex, because especially also yeah, the shark had uh, the front fins mm -hmm. that needed to pop out. Uh, maybe too complex a design for back then. Yeah. Yeah, I know yeah. that there's a couple of people that uh, are making customs right now. Um, for the fans from Retro Blast, and we all know how one of those turned out. It basically yeah. disintegrated right in his hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. Yeah, the look on his face. Because at first, I know he was excited about it, and yeah, but yeah. It just didn't hold up. Yeah. More of a no, we, wasn't more of a like a model kit than an actual toy, or yeah, it's it's based on the model kit with some three D printed parts. Mm -hmm. uh, gotcha. But there's actually uh, we still have hope because there's another uh, guy making uh, making oh, a great. custom shark. He's currently working on his version three. I have his version one, which mm -hmm. is a parts farmer. Uh, this version three is looks real, real promising, and uh, I think I have the link to Mass Customs, uh, Mass Shark and Customs down in the description link. Oh, great! Uh, th this one is really, really promising. It is. It is. Now talking about vehicles that doesn't really make sense when they're transformed. This is Razorback, and we see Brad Turner now instead of riding a motorbike, riding this. Uh, I think this is a Chevy too. Um, what is it supposed to be if it's transformed like that you know and he used that to race it's it's yeah. a very good question yeah there was no logic to me it just seems lazy design to me yeah the have you ever noticed, so have you ever noticed uh, i wonder why it's called razorback because um let me see if it can properly in the front like the front missile it really really looks like a razor I think oh. a razorback because if you think of the razorback animal, its hair, like a, uh, there's a breed of dog, and the hair mm -hmm. along its spine stands up. And I think because this thing goes from a flat position to, you know, having it like up on its haunches, I'm guessing that's my first mm. take on why they might have called it that. I'm not saying it's right. It's a weird vehicle. Let's put it away. Um, Connor Fuller. He has the higher ground. That's funny. Sorry. <laughs> saw the comment. Yeah. And Keith Knight, welcome in the chat. And uh, I saw Rebel Wookie uh, pop up in the chat too. We also have uh, Mr. Dave, from, uh, Mr. Luke from Reynolds Reviews. Hey, Luke. He's also uh, collecting mask vehicles big at the moment. So, uh... Sorry, it's a hog, not a dog. But isn't there a dog? I, I My cousin actually has one. I just saw it. There is... Um, a dog with right down its spine a totally different type of hair than the rest of its body it may not be called a razorback but i and now i gotta look that up sorry go on <laughs> I just said it's a hog in the uh, comments and well michael uh, educates himself on dog breeds uh jody and i are going to look at the buzzard with mouse and his brother maximus mayhem uh, we suddenly get the mouse brothers in the series three which is pretty cool and this is definitely a cool racing car that can transform not into two but three parts with a drone flying the middle section so that i thought that was pretty nifty and it's, it's also probably the prelude or the origin of the series four which i don't want to talk about but yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I actually had this vehicle and i had a lot of fun playing with this wow it's cool because it's in black i mean that's a great you know that's half the reason the raven's cool or uh, did, did you you did you have this, uh, Michael or uh, Chris? No, 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 no. Didn't have this. Uh, okay, chat. Keep me honest. Um, if memory serves me well, you could actually pop the drone helmet all open, and there was a molded drone beneath it. Or does my memory confuse me? Chat, please keep me honest. If somebody knows, help us out. We don't know. 
we don't know everything <laughs> but it's pretty cool and we got some other figures i don't know if you want to look at these already jody the different colorations we got uh, in series three uh, nope <laughs> just go ahead <laughs> Don't, yeah, these were it's color the last variations. Of the, it's this, the last no, no, of the no, no, no. There's one more vehicle that's coming up. A big blue angry vehicle that I'm waiting for. So I think that's are the these, last one. Do you think, I mean, is, was this around the same era that G.I. Joe, a real, Amer a real American hero, went more neon? It, like, is, yeah, it yeah. Yeah, we're talking like, 80, uh, 87 here, late 87, that okay. these two packs came out. So... Could be, could be. Follow the just, trends. Again, wondering, you know, if that's just, yeah, like you said, a trend of the way the toy industry was going. Yeah, we got a few oh, mini well, sets guys, here. Yeah. Oh, the, the question is, uh, Daniel, uh, with, um, I've got the name, the previous car. Um, what's the name of the car you should show? The race car. Here it is again, oh, Buzzard. Buzzard. If memory serves me well, Daniel, that the drone, uh, actually the helmet was uh, softer plastic and you could actually pop it open to show a molded drone face beneath it, like in the cartoon. Uh, maybe you can remember that. Hmm. Yes. Now we're running over an hour, so I'm going to move to a few of the other vehicles that are worth mentioning. Uh, one I definitely want to mention is this one, Wildcat. Finally, mm. we get Buddy Hawks with his own vehicle, which looks a bit like a firecracker, you know. It's pretty cool vehicle. And it's a, you know, it's a wrecker, a tow truck, which again ties into his job as a mechanic, which made sense. That That's actually logical, you know, compared to like Brad going from the motorcycle to a, a stock car. But yeah, yeah. that was... That's I've I've seen that once or twice looking on for other toys on eBay and it, it is kind of a cool looking toy. It is definitely Jody. Any thoughts of on, on, uh, on Wildcat? I love the Wildcat. I had it. Uh, I also uh, love the Firecracker. I just love those uh, American pickup trucks, and I found this one really really cool, especially with the the tow hook on the back, which actually decently worked. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it was a really cool toy. Yeah, that tow hook. Yeah. Awesome. I think there's one more vehicle to come. Oh, no, two more. Yeah, this is the the blue angry one I was talking about. Bulldog with uh, Boris Bushkin, if I'm correct about that name. What that, is it? That's a pretty heavy rig. Yeah, another tank type thing. Similar mm -hmm. uh, gimmick to Rhino's smokestacks. Um, but cool, yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Cool figure, cool mask. One I one I always wanted as a kid, never got as a kid. Uh, I do have one as an adult. Mm. Pretty cool, yeah. yeah. Um, again, if we didn't have enough motorbikes already, <laughs> along came Bullet with uh, the driver Ali Bombay. Ali Bombay, yeah. Ali Bombay, and yeah, it's it's. Yeah, it is what it is. Really, it's it's it's. I never had it as a kid, and it didn't didn't appeal to me yeah. as much, to be I, honest. I had, it, I had it as a kid. Definitely not my favorite. The, the, the little winch on the back was a nice little play feature. Um, so it's yeah. a motorbike turning into a little hovercraft. Uh, it's the motorcycle mode that just doesn't look right to my eye. Um, with the wheels sticking so proud of the tires, it just, yeah. I mean, I understand it works for when it's in its, you know, defense mode, but yep. in motorcycle mode. So it's, everything else looked so like the vehicle it was trying to look like. And that just, mm. I don't know, for my eye, it just wasn't appealing. All right. We're going to do this one too from 87 because it's, this one is, yeah, wow. this is worth mentioning, isn't it? It's uh, called Goliath, and it came again with two figures. We get uh, it's Nevada. Actually, it's actually Goliath 1 and Goliath 2. Oh, yes. Uh, Thank you. For some Thank reason, you. they never gave both vehicles their own name. So it's just Goliath 1 and Goliath 2. And uh, yeah, uh, I've always been, although I'm not the biggest fan of the racing series, uh, this one uh, is kind of on my wish list so to have thrown someday. Uh, it's pretty, pretty cool. The, the only kind of design challenge with this is kind of similar like with the uh, G.I. Joe uh, HQ. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. You've got a big cannon sitting unprotected with somebody facing everybody <laughs> and shoot me. But yeah, that's, I love the really Formula cool. One car. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a really well designed toy, actually. It's pretty sturdy. Yeah, and you have two vehicles in one, which is kind of cool too. You know? Yeah, two figures, two two uh, two vehicles. Yeah. Nevada Rushmore and uh, Matt Tracker in a pretty cool outfit. Mm -hmm. yep. I think uh, the blue and the yellow looks uh, pretty good on him. So I, yeah, and the series three. Besides, uh, I think this is the last vehicle, right? I'm just gonna look forward. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're talking about play sets later on a bit, so uh, we're gonna uh, leave it yeah, there. Yeah, well, let's go there. Because series three was actually the one of the place, uh, the series of the place as well. Hmm. Although, yeah, is Laser Command is it a playset or is it a vehicle? Because hmm. it's oh. it's listed as a playset. Mm -hmm. uh, the vehicle doesn't transform. The only thing the vehicle does is, uh, is explode. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know this this one, Michael? Did I have it? No, 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 no yeah, recollection of it either. No, it's uh, I've I ran I haven't seen this ever in the store. Uh, can't recollect it from the cartoons. Um, I think I've seen it a couple of times on eBay. Uh, it's a pretty rare one, especially come to get complete. The little crate turns into a little uh, turret. Uh, the mm -hmm. fun thing about fun thing about this is it's it's called Laser Command because it has this uh, infrared laser thing in the jiggy. So oh. the little oh. gun turret that comes out of the crate can actually shoot the car, and if you hit the car. The car actually explodes into many, many pieces. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's, uh, that's it cool. does have a very similar look to Firecracker. Both the stickers, the front of the, you know, it, it's a very similar vehicle. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's the pickup truck with a cab on the bed mm. is what it looks like to my eye. Yeah. Even the front bumper, very mm. similar. I don't like it. I don't like the no, look of it. I've never been a fan of it. But yeah. I would call it a vehicle, not a, I mean, if that's, if that's a playset and not a vehicle, then Boulder Hill is a playset and not a vehicle. <laughs> ah, Boulder Hill. Sorry, yeah. Rhino. Rhino. Yeah. In yeah. my opinion. And then, then we got the three little uh, places yes. the Build Up Blast, Pit Stop Catapult, and the Collector. I have all three of them. Really, what is really, really cool about all of these places is that they actually interact with the toys. Um, you can see this, this, this picture is actually taken from uh, our dear friend Analog Toys' uh, Boulder Hill review. Uh, where you can uh, definitely see that these play sets with the little fuel nozzles can actually be plugged into the toys. Yep. And, uh, Condor and had one. Oh, sorry. The I was just Gator say. had yeah. four. Each on the one on each side, two on the boat. So yeah, this uh, was a really, really nice gimmick from uh, Mask, besides the transforming uh, of the vehicles, that they actually also interact with the little play sets. Mm. I, because uh, the hoses sometimes would uh, bind up the action on the pumps, I would often put the hoses, because there's four ports on the computer side of the cage, I would have them on there, because I think on the box art, it even showed that at some point, but you can actually put the hoses in these four ports and then you don't have any, they, you don't have them interfering all that. Sometimes, see, the movement of the cannons will actually pull them out of their socket. So, but you can actually take these hoses and just put them right, uh, right on these ports. Are there are there more ports in the in the back of the Boulder Hill? None that I ever have ever seen. No, no, just just on here, and then the you know the the pump ports. But there's nothing like. Over here where the air, uh, air tank is or the uh, air compressor to check your tire pressure, N nothing there at all now. Mm -mm. mm. okay. Awesome. Thank you. But the detail, again, the detail that they took to have these vehicles, both good guys and bad guys, interact with the playset. <clears throat> Gotta love that. And now you know, Luke. Now you know. And knowing <laughs> is half the battle. Yeah, so uh, an amazing toy line, really yeah. an amazing toy line. And so not only the toys themselves, um, I'm also really amazed what they did with um, a lot of the other stuff. Not only the posters, and we've seen some posters, and I've got some more posters. But 
if you look into what I did with the commercials, it's also really, really exceptional. Um, so there's, if you look into the series one commercials, and I actually have some, they actually use a lot of stop motion. When innocent looking vehicles and ordinary men become an awesome fighting team. Mask. Heavy critical deal. When innocent looking vehicles and ordinary men become an awesome fighting team. It's the secret of mask. When innocent looking vehicles and ordinary men become an awesome fighting team, it's the secret of mask, where illusion is the ultimate weapon. So, and not only this, if we look into series two, um, where we actually got introduced to a lot of new vehicles, you'll actually see that they also started using real vehicles in the uh, in the commercials, actually. Ultimate weapon. So this is the new hurricane. Ooh -wee. And it's on our side, Hondo. Tracker here. Assemble mask. Intruder closing in. This new Raven's pretty as a lady. And friendly as a crocodile, Calhoun. Tracker here. Assemble mask. Venom's back in business. So yeah, that's uh, pretty amazing what they do. Uh, what they started doing with the commercials. Awesome, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Was that a DeLorean in that first one? You are correct, sir. They actually use a freaking DeLorean in the, <laughs> one of the commercials. I actually oh, wow. think, though, if you look closely, I think the DeLorean was the only real, real vehicle. The other ones looked kind of like, yes, they were full size, but they look more like props than actual vehicles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, yeah. the ones driving out of the garage are actually real vehicles. So it's a gotcha. real Corvette driving out of there. That's a real the, the Hurricane. It's a real vehicle driving out of the garage. So yeah, they so they actually put some pretty big bucks in those commercials. Yeah. Mm. Oh, definitely. Yeah. To make you know the outfits and all of that stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. All right, what topic do we have next on our uh, schedule to talk about? Uh, well, well, we can, well, speaking of advertisement and commercials, we can actually uh, have a quick look into some of the different posters across the world. Because, yeah, we saw definitely, definitely different styles of the posters. Um, mm. So this is actually one, I believe, from the US. Yes. Um, in Europe, we definitely got more these type of uh, posters. I don't know if you have seen these kind of posters in the States, uh, Michael. Absolutely. Yep. Had I, I had that one actually. Came with one of the vehicles or play sets. Yeah. Yeah, so both I really, yeah, I really love these kind of uh, posters yeah. uh, where they actually have a little backdrop and a little uh, diorama. Mm -hmm. uh, you see that with the Transformer ones as well. I, I just love these kind. You would also see that these types of photos in the previous one more in like the, the wish books, the catalogs like uh, mm -hmm. Montgomery Ward or Sears or JC Penny. So they had more of these stylized photos, which really helped sell the toy, I think. Yeah. And uh, if memory serves me well, this is one from France um, mm. where they actually pay more attention to the poster itself uh, rather than actually showing the items or the details of the items or the items names on there. Mm, wow. This one I just really, really love. This is yeah. the one from Italy. It's very, very stylized, very, very cartoonesque. So they lose, use a lot of paint brushing uh, on top of the, the photography uh, of the real vehicles. So this is a really, really awesome poster. Wow. Well, speaking of that, this is, we see that actually also in the box arts coming back um so i actually have some examples of some boxes across the world so there's some differences which of course the difference between the us and the canadian is the canadian is double language english and french but what we saw in the poster of italy that actually in europe a lot of our boxes actually had the same stylized versions it was more cartoonesque so they grabbed the toy paintbrush a lot of details on there made it very cartoonesque and what you'll also see a big difference is that they put more action in it because you see the the, the rotors of the condor so yeah. in the u.s for or the uh, european version sorry these bugs are driving me crazy 
Uh, the European version is very, very cartoonesque. Yeah. Uh, what I've also found is that, uh, especially in Germany and Germany alone, that the logo is actually changed. So for the German, for some reason, the Rhino doesn't fire laser, doesn't fire a missile. Hmm. Doesn't even have the rear open on the photo even to oh, show the exactly. missile. Yeah. Has anybody ever seen the Rhino in styro styrofoam inserts? So while I was doing some research, I actually found that apparently in some countries, although I can't find out where, they actually use styrofoam instead of cardboards as an insert. Mm -hmm. uh, I've only seen the cardboard insert myself. Same. Same. Most yeah, of the styrofoam, I always think styrofoam and transformers. Yep. You know, the old transport, the G1 transformer. Mm. Uh, well, yeah. We've also saw some changes in the toy. Um, like apparently firecracker in Germany never came with the freeze guns, the rear freeze guns. Hmm. And the Rhino missile apparently came in more colors than just black. Mm -hmm. uh, across the majority of the European Union, they came with grayish. And in Germany, they came with a white missile and said TV set. Mm. TV satellite. Do you also <laughs> notice those dots, those circles um, right around, you know, in between the fins, there's those little mm -hmm. dots on the white in the gray version but on the mm -hmm. black version i'm looking my uh mine doesn't have that at all yeah it's, it's very very smooth but also look at the the bottom of the missile um so in the european version has way more details uh there's this little indent uh, on the top mm -hmm. like a little slit mm -hmm. yeah so they put a lot more detail in the for some reason yeah, i just i mean i just mine has a uh, there's, you know, the, the indents are there. I think it's might, maybe not showing up as well the way the position of that missile is in the picture, Jody, but they are there, mm -hmm. and I think they're as deep. It just could be the way the photo looks. Okay. And if you lived in Germany and you got the second wave of the toys, good luck, guys. Um, <laughs> we are already short in missiles worldwide. Well, apparently, if you lived in Germany, uh, if you got the second wave of the toys, they didn't come with missiles at all. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. For the Thunderhawk and the Switchblades, they, they were completely absent for some reason. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's odd. Mm -hmm. Was this across different toy lines in Germany, or was Mask the only one affected? Or as far as I can find, only uh, uh, and only the Thunderhawk and the Switchblades. All the other ones just did come with their missiles. It was only the Thunderhawk and the, the very Switchblades. Strange. Very, strange. very, very strange. Wonder what the rhyme and reason to that was. Oh, and another one thing I found is <laughs> that Ooh. did you know that Ooh. in Argentine they actually came with a, uh, another playset? So they took the gun turret from the jackhammer, <laughs> uh, put it on what I assume is a vacuum formed little hill, and sold it as a separate toy. You can put that in your aquarium. Yeah. Or you can put it in your aquarium. Well, it probably floats, Chris. It probably <laughs> floats. <laughs> Pretty cool. Different, uh, different outfit on mm. on dagger. There, it looked like <clears throat> very cool. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Good stuff. So let's talk about the toys we weren't interested in. Uh, do you have any in the catalogs, Chris? Or uh, yeah, there was a toy line uh, called the Split Series. Mm. Oh, just let's not talk about split series. <laughs> let's talk about the other ones. Okay, the other ones. Uh, go ahead. Have you ever seen this one? No, nope, never. Uh, apparently, there was a company called Ideal, and they made a little racing track stunt set uh, out of it. So <laughs> what, what you see back in those days, they took actually other concepts or other existing toys and just rebranded them um so all that's different between this one and the normal one is that it came with a little thunderhawk mm -hmm. and non-transforming and i believe another car as well uh can't recollect which one or skelectrix actually came with mask vehicles yes Ooh, that looks good that looks good yeah there's, also one, that one. there's one that came with rhino as well um i saw in one of the I don't know if it was Scale X trick or if it was 
um, like Tyco. I think it was Tyco Corp that had Rhino and uh, another vehicle. Um, the only thing I could find from Tyco is the electric train playset. Okay. Oh, yes. Um, Very it's, cool. As far as I could find, uh, I think they come with a few little vehicles. Um, as far as I can see, I believe that's what well, is that volcano or is that the the laser combat car? That's not that volcano. The... That's the laser combat car because those tires are way too tiny to be volcano. Yeah, but the other one is definitely hurricane. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. How big was that Boulder Hill there? <laughs> I think that's I mean, just comparison, you know. I think that's just Photoshop magic. <laughs> well, doesn't it say? I thought it said it comes Mass Command Center there in the. Yes, yeah, in it's included, but it's yeah. a small, um, tiny replica. Right. I, I just was curious what the scale was. You know, I know it wasn't full size, but oh yeah, right. That's a little cardboard insert. So okay. it's it's not a real toy. It's a little cardboard. Um... Gotcha. Mm, like version. like Cloud City cardboard playset mm. kind of thing or something. Got you, got you, yep. got you. But then just more plain and boring. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, Mask was pretty bulletproof uh, as far as Michael and I are concerned. You said, Jody, you had some issues with some of the Mask vehicles and sometimes they need repairs. Yeah, it's indeed... Um... Everybody says that Transformer was a brittle toy line. I've never had my Transformers broken. Um, I can't say the same for uh, for Mass though. Mm -hmm. So the very first that broke on me is this one, the mm -hmm. little pin that holds the uh, the sub uh, broke, uh, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't fire anymore. Hmm. The second that broke on me was poor little switchblade. Uh, with my switch blade, so there's two little pins that actually hold the wings up in helicopter. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. snapped on me. Mm -hmm. uh, the third one that broke on me was the Raven. And if you actually look up Raven on eBay, you'll find a lot of Ravens with uh, with missing doors. So there's apparently a weak point in the Raven. Mm. And last but not least, my least favorite toy of them all, and I still <laughs> say this is the least well-designed one, it is the Firefly. So the first thing that happened is the little wing part in front, uh, the plastic, uh, it's a plastic hinge. It's very, very brittle or very prone to snapping. Uh, mm -hmm. You can easily stress it out if you use it too much. And the other mm. thing is you have to be really, really careful falling in the wings because those guns do love to bump into the chassis. Just like Raven. Uh, just like uh, Manta. Yeah. Similar. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm not the only one that uh, has issues with these because you find a lot of these toys uh, broken on the Internet. Um, look at Retro Blasting. Uh, somebody actually donated a huge box of mass toys to him and uh he had to fix a lot of them um the springs losing the tension uh the springs getting rusty so he had a lot of rusty springs and rusty inserts so if you actually go uh, there's a link down in the description uh, if you're interested to his toy review mass toy review uh where he actually shows what he had to repair on these so he had to fix a hurricane uh, he had to fix slingshots so luckily, most of these are uh, actually pretty repairable. Um, yep. Most of these you can just use a screwdriver. Uh, some are more difficult, uh, and they're Sonic welded. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the Raven he had to fix. Yep. But look at how complex the mechanisms of these are. Very. Yeah, they're um, some of the most highly designed toys. I mean, engineered for sure. Uh, mm. This is uh, a rotor blade. These are rotor blades of uh, a switchblade. Um, our friend uh, Duke Efonash, uh, you'll often see him up here in the chats uh, on Retro Blasting or Analog Toys. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually had to replace uh, the hinges on the, the rotor blades. And he did this using styrene, uh, metal, and glue. And he was able to completely 
uh, remold, almost completely remold uh, the hinges of the, the rotor blades. Mm. Amazing mm. job. And then we have Mr. Dave from Vintage Toy Rush, who fixed one of the most complex vehicles in the series. And part of these are actually sonic welded, so these actually have to be snapped. Mm. Um, uh, we actually he did an amazing job. Video. Yeah, he did an amazing job. So uh, I'll actually want to give some time to Mr. Dave and actually have a little uh, little video comparison or compilation from his uh, video, which I'd like to show you. Now, the main problem seems to be around this propeller here. The idea is that when it goes into plane mode, this propeller stays down. But as you can see on this one, it just pops up. Let's take this top off. There we go, lots of springs. And oh my word, how are we gonna get that all back together? I do not know. I've literally just spent about the last hour working out where all the bits go back in because when I open this thing, everything's under tension and it just sprung out all over the place. Now, the idea is that you push them down and they're supposed to stay down. I don't know if you can see, but right in there is a little latch that's supposed to keep the blades down but as you can see, the latch doesn't stay in place. Which there we go. There's a spring there. So this is the lever with the latch. And it's very simple. It's really a design flaw in Switchblade itself. And it's to do with this lever. If you look underneath, there's this very, very thin piece of plastic. And this has snapped. Now, this time I've used a more powerful spring and I've moved the spring just slightly off the fulcrum point there to give it more leverage. Right, moment of truth. If we can push this down, there we go, and it clips into place and it's now held in place. So yeah, this uh, in it's a brilliant repair done by Dave and look how gorgeous the, the Swiss blades uh, came out afterwards uh, when he was Beautiful. done. Yeah. Yes, everybody, uh, we got information to Jave's channel, Vintage Toy Rush, in the, in the, uh, the description below. So uh, be sure to check out. He has a great channel and he's real passionate about his toys like we are. So recommend that channel for sure. Okay, um, there is one. So you guys had no issues with these mass toys at all breaking on you? None no. whatsoever. No, 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 no. I piranha never broke, uh, never had a problem. I mean, this, I can, I can do that all day long. No problem there. No problem with the firefly. I must've popped that open and closed, never broke. Nothing, yeah. nothing broke on these for me ever as a kid. No. Might even surprise you that my T-Bop is still in working condition. Works nice. perfectly. Yeah. That's quality toy for you. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it's a quality toy, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, not much to go wrong with old T-Bob there. Yes, Hell, yes. Scott doesn't even have a painted face. Mm -hmm. But yeah, good stuff. Well, you, you, yeah. you did say uh, in another video, actually, I believe it was in uh, Chris's uh, collection tour of your collection, where you actually said that T-Bob was your favorite toy. Yeah, <laughs> that was so strong use of sarcasm. But yes, I uh, Chris asked yes. me to pick one of my favorite toys, so... I had to pick the hated. It's actually, actually, I, I mean, it really is a, it's a weak toy. It looks nothing like the cartoon. In fact, <laughs> you, you gift it's, you gifted me this, Jody. I don't haven't painted it yet, but uh, this is far more cartoon accurate than, than uh, the actual toy that they came out with. Um, I had to have it as a kid just because the com the collection wouldn't have felt complete. Um, you know, you saw Scott and T-Bob on every damn episode. So, yeah, I, uh, I'm not a fan of Scott at all. T-Bob, I would have fixed. He just needed some programming changes. Just fix that silly voice and fix some of his logic circuits. He'd be great. Who wouldn't want a, a robot servant that, you know, mm. also was a motor scooter? Such a cool idea. Motor but, yeah, as to, to answer your questions, I had no problems with things breaking on mine at all. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they robust toy i thought uh, considering the scale it is because it's smaller than three and three quarter and the amount of detail i mean rivet points and as we said before the the goodyear names the different 
names on all the, the brand names, uh, the, the different details that they showed on all these. I mean, they really didn't cut corners and the engineering is extremely intricate as you saw in that video that Dave did on the, the inner workings of some of these toys to get them to have spring loaded mechanisms and firing different effects. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, joking aside, what was your favorite? Uh, what, what were your favorite toys, Michael? Um, Rhino. Uh, all, I'm thinking the ones that I would always get out. I'd always get out Rhino. I'd always get out Thunderhawk. I'd always get Firecracker out. And I'd always get out Switchblade, Jackhammer, and um, Piranha. Because, again, you saw them on the show all the time. Um, and they the features were just cool on these you know especially the ones that launch things spring loaded wise like mm -hmm. like the rear tire on firecracker or a missile on on uh rhino yeah so those those are the my favorite toy is uh condor that's uh yeah I, brad is a musician i'm a musician i like the motorbike so that, that's always has a special place in my heart uh i guess and what would yours be, uh, Jody? Well, definitely the Rhino, um, because I was, somehow as a kid I had a big fascination with the, the big rigs. Um, of course, uh, the switchblades uh, being a helicopter, uh, but definitely Manta. Manta was definitely Ooh, one of my favorites. So it would be one. Rhino, Manta, uh, switchblades, uh, yes. firecracker. Yes. Before we go to our guests in the okay. green room, because we've got already somebody waiting, I want to take some time and look at the final year, 1988, that we got the fourth series of Mask Series. So we're going to take some time for that. I know you don't like this very much, Jody. This is the split series, the, the clone vehicles. And uh, now you've seen it, and now take them away. Okay. <laughs> we, we, we couldn't be bothered with them. Sorry. All no, right. No, no, no. I did have two of them. Uh, I had the Dynamo and I had the Stiletto, which was the only time we actually got Gloria Baker. Um, I still definitely think this was definitely inspired by the racing series, um, the other one, which came with uh, the, the twins. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, I just don't get the whole clone stuff. Um, Stiletto, uh, nice in the combined version, very, very boring in the split version. But, uh, yeah, let's not talk about the split series. <laughs> Let, let's take it away and never look at this picture again. Okay, it's gone. Let's go to yep. our first guest in the green room. He's been on a, a live stream we did before when we did the after talk of Iconicon, and uh, we're going to have him on uh, again. Oh, he just walks away. Oh, no, right. He's back. Hey. <laughs> yeah, Hello. I need to turn the light on. <laughs> How are you, good sir? How are you doing? Doing fine. Can everybody hear me? I'm having to use my phone. Loud and clear, Sound loud and fine. clear. Okay, great, great. So, uh, mask, yes. I only had three toys. Via, I had the Boulder Hill playset, the Raven, and the Manta. That was it. You have good uh, taste, sir. I think, as I mentioned in Icon uh, the Iconicon live stream, my parents were all were both teachers, so we didn't afford a lot. So, uh, but I did, and I, I remembered the other day. Well, when I was uh, thinking about it, how did I have Matt Tracker hat figure and a bunch of others? I had bought a bunch of the little two packs at one time, mm -hmm. and I remembered buying the. They were in the same scale as, uh, I don't know if you remember Kenner's Bone Age line, and uh, mm -hmm. they had a Sky Commander's yes. line and those. I, they mm -hmm. were pretty much in the same scale. Same thing with Dino Riders. I bought all those to be uh, so I can make stuff for them, but in all honesty, I don't remember making anything for them. Mm -hmm. Hold on a second. Hold on. <laughs> See if she's if she's ready. Okay. Yeah, my daughters are heading out here real quick. So. <laughs> no worries, no worries. But you see, you oh. so you actually owned the 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 Boulder Hill playset. Correct, correct. Wow. I had to uh, sell most of my toys. Uh, I don't have much left. Uh, in fact, the only toy from my childhood I have is my twenty inch tall Shogun Warrior Godzilla. Um, the uh, 
in 2003, I lost my job and while I was working and I needed to some money fast. So I just started eBay, everything. And, uh, well, had a lot of stuff that just kind of disappeared. So, mm -hmm. but I, uh, I, kind of would, I kind of would have expected you to have a cardboard Boulder Hill. <laughs> uh, I was making a lot of stuff with them. Uh, mm -hmm. one of the things I did, uh, and one of the complaints with mask was that it was not in scale with GI Joe. Uh, I took the Stinger, the the Cobra uh, version of the Vamp, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. had some, made some uh, cardboard fold-out wings for underneath it, and took the uh, missile launcher and made it into a, some uh, little vertical rudders, and basically made it where it could change into a plane as nice. well. Ooh. So I did all that. I really kind of modeled it after Dr. Claw's car off of Inspector Gadget. Yeah. So yeah. that's when, uh, when Jody, when you had that video about the the Mad, the Mad Mobile and the Gadget yeah. Mobile, I, like, I didn't know they actually made those things. So I was trying to make my own toys up for them. So that was, yeah, that, was a, that was a lucky find when I found it in somebody else's collection. And yeah, those are hard to find. To, uh, the Popey Bandai stuff. Popey Bandai in general is very, very hard to find. Mm. Oh, yes. Uh, but I used my Boulder Hill playset not just for Mask. Uh, I used it for Transformers. Uh, though it was a little big, it still kind of worked. Uh, I also uh, used it as a base for Captain Power figures, mm. too. Uh, that I had, so that was kind of I just combined everything together, made my own stuff. So yes, <laughs> nice. Yeah, I would. Um, you, oh, go ahead. Sorry. So you said, yeah, um, Dino Riders is actually not far off scale wise. Did you also use Boulder Hill for the Dino Riders, or? I did not have uh, any of the dinosaurs. All I had was the figures because they sold those in a two pack of figures as well. Uh, so. That was uh, kind of, uh, I was just getting fig little figures and stuff to try to make my own toys, my own vehicles and things for them. Then I found uh, Air Raiders, which was a Hasbro line of little army men size mm. figures. And that's what I started using for to make all my toys. So I had a Jim bunch brought, of Jim brought up, you know, combining different toy lines. I wanted to ask that. I would often use transformers because some of them worked in scale with mask very well right. especially the, the cars so did anybody else mix different lines when they played with mask toys i had these big tonka cars uh there's big vehicles uh, strong made of metal and uh i had a truck a rig that was same color same size as rhino so that that always was my rhino because i didn't have them as a kid and i can place two figures on the seats in it and obviously it couldn't transform, but hey, there you go. That, that was my Rhino. Nice. It worked. It, worked. Yeah. it, it definitely works, yeah. Uh, I want to thank Kieran for that lovely comment he made. I think I lost it now. Um, that's very kind and a wonderful compliment ah. to our special guest, uh, Michael, as well. Too kind. Know. Thank you, Kieran. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Kieran. I'm just honored that's to be a guest. I think I think for me the only time I combined them is yeah when I was playing Forge with my brother when we lined up Forge of little uh, domino bricks, we <laughs> every toy that had a firing uh, mechanism to shoot at each other. Oh yes, uh, firing squad, sure. One of the things that I did, I decided one day I remember this clearly. It was a Saturday afternoon. I decided to take my Raven apart. Oh, wow. uh, it has like 20 dozen screws underneath it. Mm. And I decided just to see how this would come apart and see what it would do. Well, I got all the screws out and it still wasn't coming apart. It was still kind of <laughs> holding together. Yeah. And I just kind of set it down. And then all of those springs that act as the transformation thing just kind of relieved. It exploded right there on my <laughs> desk. And I spent the next four hours hunting for little pieces on the floor, oh. uh, finding the little lever that flips the hood over, finding the little spring for this and a spring for that. And 
spent the rest of the day trying to get it back together. I, that was my biggest regret. I managed to get it back together perfectly. It still worked. Mm -hmm. But I was like, okay, I'm never taking this thing apart again. This, is, <laughs> this was well, a lot more than pretty expected. good reverse engineering, not actually seeing how it all went together because it exploded on you. So that's pretty. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you did that? That's that's pretty good. Uh, let's see, if it was mid '80s, I would have been in my mid teens at that time. Okay. Yeah, I was. I was planning to go into engineering and stuff. So yeah, I was able to figure out all sorts of things. Sure. So mm -hmm. it wasn't that big of a problem. I took most of my toys apart anyway. So gotcha. Indeed, Wolfie, indeed. You turn into Claymore mode. Uh, you can also see it in uh, Dave uh, Vintage Toy Rush's video when he pops open the switchblade. It is an explosion of parts and springs, <laughs> <laughs> which fly all over the place. Yeah, I, can yeah. buy that. I was, was going to repair mine. And it, this is before I saw Dave's video because Dave's video is fairly recent. Um, mm -hmm. This is maybe six months ago, maybe even more. But I was going to do a repair on mine. And the same thing I found out. I, I first disassembled the donor unit and I found out that it was sonic welded right here. And and when I took it apart, I mean, like Dave's, it just it's thousands of people. It's not thousands, but it felt like that. I mean, springs went yeah. everywhere and you had no concept of where anything laid because it's not like there's a lot of information out there now with Dave's help. There are Michael, Michael from Retroblasting has some videos too, but it, unless it's specific to the toy, because they're all so different, mm -hmm. you're kind of lost and you just got to figure your way around. Yeah. The, the, I was, I was always impressed with the engineering of the mask toys. A uh, friend of mine had the uh, the Thunderhawk. I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, uh, the Switchblade, I never saw it in person until I was at a, uh, I think I was at a toy store, uh, one of the little local uh, re retro toy stores, and I was like, man, this thing's incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, just the how much they work went into it to make it transform with just pushing a few buttons. That's the thing I liked about even Boulder Hill. You can be behind it and transform the entire thing from behind. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to go around to the front and flip something over or anything. It was really neat. It's like almost like working a puppet or something. I mean, everything, yeah. you know, everything is here. I can move those guns. I can can move the howitzer. You can move. You can move. You know, Brad. Uh, Bye, guy. Yeah, Brad up there and stuff, and you know everything. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the transformation, especially Thunderhawk. I mean, it really is. Other than the cannons coming out, it's it's one, right? One button, you know. Right, that's, that's it. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it I took really. It is really I impressive never, engineering. Yeah, I never really even used the toys, the mask toys as mask things. I think mm -hmm. I put it in the comments that uh, or the chat. I played with my Raven like it was Kit, and oh. Boulder Hill was his uh, command center. Perfect. And my version of Kit could change into a plane, a boat, a submarine, a hovercraft, anything. You know, I just flipped the wheels under. Hey, he's a hovercraft now. Yeah. Uh, you know, just just kind of like the pole position uh, yeah. to cartoon show. Yeah. And fold the wings down, flip up the back. Hey, he's, he's a jet. Flip the hood over. He's a boat. Anything, <laughs> any type of mode. So, well, and, and I mean, once what season four of Knight Rider, they had that super pursuit mode where it right. almost did transform. So that really, I totally can see, especially the back with that engine that pops up the way right. Kit looked. You know, yeah, I totally can see that. Absolutely great stand-in for that. So yeah, it worked pretty well. Uh, uh, the Manta I had it, that was the bad guy. So, yeah. you know, every week he fought, uh, or whenever I played with him, he fought what's her face, Vanessa. Yeah. To, uh, to, for something. But anyway, but hers couldn't change into a boat. Hers could only fly. So, but yeah, it was a, it was just a fun little time with neat little, impressive little toys. I've, there's a, uh, a uh, retro place uh, called a uh, store in down in Fort Worth and the Dallas Fort Worth Dallas area. Uh, they have a little a section of mask toys, and I'm tempted every time I go in to buy the uh, 
the Raven, but I'm like, wow, that's a little expensive right there. Mm. I'm going to yeah. have to really plan for that if I really want to mm. get that thing. So yeah. I didn't realize these things got up to that price. I guess that's just the, the amount of the engineering and everything that they're, I wouldn't say delicate, but they are kind of due to all that. You know, the springs can rust and things. So I guess they mm. are getting a little rare. Yeah, I mean, storage really. I, I think the the collection that that Jody referred to, Michael French re, uh, restoring on retroblasting. Not if I'm not mistaken, those were stored um, like in a, under a porch or something. It, mm -hmm. they, they were exposed to moisture and whatnot. So wow. they this yeah the screws and the springs and those things definitely did rust. Um, but you're right. They, they're they're a bit persnickety. You can you have to be careful. They can be finicky because of the mechanisms and. Like Jody said, if you don't fold certain ones just right, or you know, if, if you're hard on it, you can you can break off these tabs and stuff. And right. but yeah, I mean, considering the complexity, I always and I I mean I played with my toys. They you know they held up. The stickers even for the most mm. part held up. So yes. yeah, uh, I, I don't. I think the complexity is what's going to cause us to not see these toys re-released. I think the cost would be astronomical. Um, yeah. and then considering the fact if they upscaled them even to just three and full three and three quarter inch size, I mean, think how enormous Boulder Hill would be. Well, the, there, there are two three and three quarter inch toys. So <clears throat> there's actually a Matt Trago figure in the GI Joe range, hmm. right. three and three quarter inch. Yeah. Four inch, And yep. there is a Matt Tracker in the IDW Revelations. Pack. So IDW made a, a comic series uh, called Revelations. Forgot okay. the name. So it's a crossover series between uh, GI Joe, Transformers, Mask, mm -hmm. uh, Tron, and two or three other properties. And they actually yeah. made a gift set. Micronauts uh, is in there too. Yeah. Micronauts is in there too. Great. I knew I knew about the comics, but I didn't know they actually made the toys. That's pretty wild. That, that was some type of exclusive for one of the comic cons or something, if uh, I remember right. Yep, more uh, the Matt Tracker figure, the three and three quarter inch one, I actually remember getting. I saw that on the shelf in, uh, I can't remember what store I was in now, and I, I bought it. And uh, I was like, wow, this is imp this is so cool. Kind of combined the two lines. Yeah, and yeah. they even had the package, even had the mask emblem up in the corner, too, along with the G.I. Joe. Yep. And I was expecting a lot more than what they did. So uh, the one thing that uh, one of uh, Retro Blasting's uh, live streams a while back, uh, I think Michael said that Hasbro was toying with the idea of releasing a six-inch line of mask figures. And his thought was, don't they realize it's a vehicle line? That yeah. They're mm -hmm. not a figure line. No. Uh, and... That's the thing that I think is happening now with a lot of the toy lines in the six inch scale. You don't have all the play sets and stuff to immerse into the universe of the toy line. It's not yeah. there. Mask had everything. You had it all there. You could, it was all together in one thing. Yep. Uh, yeah, the world building, you can't, that six inch scales, I think it's right. too big. It's, it's mm -hmm. great for a figure. I have, I only have one six inch scale vehicle and it's the, the snow speeder. It's, mm. it's nice, but it's, it's enormous. You can't, right. I barely can fit it in my mm. cabinet. You know, yeah, it's, I, it's, it's too big. And these would be, they would be, be unwieldy. Yeah, yeah. They'd be unwieldy. I mean, imagine what the size of Rhino would be in six inch. Uh, it wouldn't fit in, it wouldn't fit on a coffee table. Then. Yeah. yeah just right. It, yeah. The, uh, crazy. most of the toys are, that, that world building and everything. It's like, if Star Wars was released with just figures, no vehicles, I don't think it would have been a popular line at all. Mm -hmm. you know, be, it would just be like, oh, it's a bunch of little characters. You have to have the Falcon. You have to have the X-Wing fighter and everything. Now, yes, I built most of mine, but I did have the Millennium Falcon. So yeah. uh, that one was uh, one of my favorite toys. And an episode of Blake Seven where the Scorpio crashes ended up being replayed in my with my Falcon over and over again outside. So I sent my Falcon to uh, Michael. It's in pieces now, but anyway, mm. <laughs> uh, yeah. The uh, 
that world building is necessary. You can't just have a bunch of figures and say, oh, pretend that you have a, a car mm -hmm. that can change into a jet. Uh, mm -hmm. No. Yeah, no. Imagination only goes so far. Michael said that one too. So I, I totally agree. And, and yeah. to not have... To, to not have vehicles with a line that is known for vehicles makes no sense. I mean, if, right. if they, somebody must have looked at that, saw the line, saw the title, and thought, oh, it's about masks. Mm, yeah. Not really. Did you guys actually play with your figures like they did on the show with, uh, like, penetrator mask on and all that kind oh, of yeah. stuff? You yeah. did? I, I did. did. Not well, I only had two, a few oh. of them. I didn't. Do you, the, the mask that I had with all those little two-pack figures... I made my own clinicons out of them for the for the receptacons. <laughs> I made a little body and stuck them on for head. <laughs> that was nice. my clinicon. So wow. uh, I love that. I never, That's brilliant. That's brilliant never to use them like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Uh, uh, guys, we're coming up. Uh, we're over two hours. Um, oh, uh, right. I think for really the duration good. of the stream, we're going to draw an end to this. Uh, Jody? Yes, sir. It's so uh, well. I'd like to thank very much to a world made of cardboard for joining us live. Uh, I'd so like to thank everybody in the chat. Uh, thank you all. Um, a world made of cardboard, please feel free to hang about a bit for the after show uh, between us. And uh, thank you very, very much again, Herr Schaefer, Captain Schaefer. All right. With a thank you. display in front of you. Um, uh, Mr. Miwa, where can we find you? Yes, you can find me on uh, Chasing 80s Toys on YouTube. I'm on Facebook since a few weeks, and I'm also on Instagram. So if you search Chris Miwa, there are not that many around with that name, I believe. And if you type in Chasing 80s Toys, you can find me. But links to my channel are in the description below. And Jody, of course, people have found you on your channel, but where else can uh, people find you? Yep, it's Gen X Toys Geek on YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. It's, it's just Gen X Toys Geek all over the place. <laughs> yes. Once again, thank you, everybody in the chat who uh, popped up your chats. We, uh, we all read and we popped a few up on the screen during this uh, episode. And Jody and I were from the Netherlands. We are from the Netherlands. We are the crazy Dutchess. And I think we will be back for more live streams in the future. Right, Jody? Yeah. We will be back in the future. <laughs> okay. Uh, Michael, World Made of Carblue, please stay on. Or we'll do a little bit of chat after this. And uh, everybody in the chat, have a good rest of your weekend. And Take care, everybody. <laughs>